What's happening everyone, my name is Alex and welcome back to a new review. Today we are checking out another rock device from Doogie called the S70. So this is fairly similar to the Doogie S80 that I reviewed about a month ago, but this one is more user friendly I'm gonna say, because it's smaller, it's lighter and it's basically easier to live with it every day. Now if you go on most websites you're gonna notice that they call this a gaming phone, but having a Bluetooth controller, a gaming mode and somewhat better cooling than other devices doesn't necessarily make a phone a gaming phone, so calling this a gaming phone is quite a stretch. So this phone is using the MediaTek Helio P23, which is an octa-core CPU that gets a similar performance to the Snapdragon 636, and that's why I'm saying we can't exactly call this um, a gaming device. Now for most apps that you're gonna use with this phone, like the Facebook app for example, um, scrolling through your feed works extremely well um, on Chrome, um, zooming in, zooming out, scrolling up, scrolling down, once again works um, without any lag, and you can even play games on it, like PUBG for example on medium settings. Now, you will notice some skipped frames if you're playing games like PUBG, but definitely not bad and um, everything that we are expecting from this um, particular CPU, because we've seen this CPU in a lot of phones and it kind of performs the same for most of them. This phone isn't exactly cheap either, so if you're looking to buy this phone, you're gonna have to spend somewhere around $250 to $300, depending where you buy it, and um, yes, it offers a lot of features for that price, but there are so many other phones that you can buy for the same money. So you have features like IP68 certification, so the phone is waterproof and it's also shockproof, so you can basically drop it as many times as you want and the phone will survive. We also have wireless charging, something that we don't usually see with a lot of um, phones these days, mostly phones from China. We have NFC, so you can make payments to the phone and you can also transfer files. And the phone actually works pretty much anywhere in the world, including the US. But definitely make sure that you check the bands before buying this phone and make sure that they actually match your carrier, because you just don't want to spend 300 bucks and then you figure out that the phone doesn't actually work um, with your carrier. So as I said, a lot of features built in this phone, but it's not gonna be easy to sell because it's kind of expensive. The build quality is also pretty good and the phone doesn't look bad considering that this is a rug device. So the corners we have some type of a rubberized material, so that would help if you drop the phone. On the back we have some kind of um, fake leather, but I guess it looks um, good as it is. And on the sides we have metal, and on the right hand side we have the power button and the volume keys, the buttons being made out of metal as well. And on the left hand side we have the slot for the SIM card, so this device can take either two SIM cards or a SIM card and an SD card, and the SD card can also be used as expandable um, storage. So the phone comes with about 64 gigs of internal storage, out of that we have about 54 gigs left, but you can just use a SD card so you can expand um, the internal storage. And um, just below that we have um, a customizable button, so you can choose basically any app um, to open whenever you press that button, and me I just chose the Google Assistant um, whenever I'm pressing that button. On the front of the device we have a 6 inch screen of the 1080p resolution, this is an IPS panel that has great um, colors, great view viewing angles and good sensitivity, so really no complaints about um, the screen. And just above the screen we have a 16 megapixel front-facing camera. Unfortunately the pictures from that front-facing camera don't look anything spectacular and it doesn't exactly matter if you have a lot of light or if you don't have um, enough light. The same goes for the two cameras that we have on the back of the device. So we have a 12 megapixel sensor on the back and a 5 megapixel sensor. However, the second camera seems to be fake or doesn't do anything because um, you can't really do anything with it. If you take pictures to the portrait mode, well, the bokeh effect um, is kind of fake. You basically get a circle and everything outside the circle is blurred out, so nothing that um, exciting. As for the regular pictures, well, they just look okay if you have plenty of light. Um, as soon as you don't have enough light, they become kind of grainy and blurry. So the cameras um, on this device aren't anything exciting, but I was kind of expecting that because most dodgy doogie devices um, have the same um, poor cameras. Moving on to the fingerprint scanner that sits just below the rear camera as well, the fingerprint scanner is accurate every single time you touch it, but this is definitely not the fastest fingerprint scanner out there, so it takes like a second after you touch it for um, the phone to unlock. Now you can also use the face unlocking feature from this device and that one works great as long as you have plenty of light. When you don't have enough light um, as we've seen in the past, you cannot um, really use the face unlocking, you're gonna have to move back to the fingerprint scanner. So. You can use them, but they're not the quickest out there. 
We also get a 5500 milliamp hour battery inside this device and I'm estimating that I was able to get between 8 and 10 hours of screen on time. Now if you go under settings and battery the, the phone doesn't actually show you how much battery you used and how you use that uh, battery. So that's why I'm saying that I'm estimating that I was able to get between 8 and 10 hours of screen on time. So you're definitely going to be able to make it through an entire day on one charge. And even if you don't, if you use the phone non-stop, the phone supports fast charging as well. But you're going to have to use the charge charger that comes in the box and with that charger you can charge the phone from 0 to 100 in about 2 hours. The GPS unit inside it works pretty good as well, it only takes a couple of seconds to find your location and it doesn't matter where you go, the phone is not gonna lose um, the location. As for sensors, you have all the sensors that you could possibly need including a gyroscope. Connectivity wise, as I said before, we have NFC, we have dual band Wi-Fi, we have 4G connectivity and here in Canada I was able to use the phone on 2G, 3G and on 4G and you should be able to do that pretty much anywhere um, in the world. As for the speeds over Wi-Fi and the 4G network, they're pretty decent and on par with other phones that I've tried in the past. So the Doogie S70 is a pretty average phone. Yes, it offers a lot of features. We get wireless charging, we get NFC, IP68, but um, the cameras are pretty average. The speaker um, on the back here sounds pretty average and everything about the phone is pretty average. So as I said at the beginning of the video, it's going to be difficult to sell this phone for $300 because there are just so many other phones out there that are much better than this one. Alright guys, hopefully you enjoyed this video. If you did like it, press that like button. Don't forget to subscribe and I'll see you in the next one. Thanks for watching.